Number 109. Draw the Lewis electron dot structures for these molecules, including resonance structures where appropriate. And then for this one, we just have to predict the molecular shapes of CS3, 2 minus, and CS2, and explain how you arrived at your predictions. Okay, so uh, we're not going to predict here. We're actually going to make sure that we get it right, what the molecular shape is for CS2, uh, CS3, 2 minus, and CS2. Now, we already drew these electron dot structures together uh, in the past uh, video or so. So just check out the, the videos. I think this one was maybe 109 part A and B. Uh, so we did it step by step going over there. And this one, we're just going to find out the shapes. Now, whenever they're saying, you know, predict the molecular shapes, we're basically talking about molecular geometry. And the molecular geometry is this chart right here. So do what you got to do, Lu um, Lewis structure, flash card it out, right? Draw it out, do what you got to do just to make sure that you have your molecular geometries or your shapes down pat. Um, or maybe your teacher or professor might be able, you know, might let you use it for your test and quizzes, but um, you know, that's teacher or professor specific. Now, when you're trying to find out a molecular shape or a geometry, it always comes from the central atom. So maybe I'll just say that this is, you know, obviously this is CS3, 2 minus, and this is the CS2. Okay. Now, for both of them, you always go by the central atom. So the central atom, in this case, would be carbon and carbon. Now, when you're trying to find out your molecular shapes, the thing that really is important is we have to know how many total atoms and electron pairs there are around the central atom. Nobody cares about the atoms that are around, you know, around the central atom. It's always coming from the central atom. So how many atoms are bound to this carbon in CS3 2 minus? Well, we got a sulfur. We got another sulfur and we got another sulfur. So in this case, we have three atoms. And in this case, we got two atoms, right? Because the carbon is bound to the two sulfurs. So two atoms. And then we have to make sure if this uh, central atom has any lone pairs. So do you see any dots around the carbon, right? I don't see any, right? There was all bonds. Once again, we don't care about any of these dots because it's not the center atom. So in this case, we have zero uh, lone pairs. And the same thing for this carbon, right? I didn't see any dots. So we have zero lone pairs. Now, in order to use this chart, we have to just take our numbers three and zero for the first one and add them up. So three plus zero is three. 0 plus 2 is a total of 2. So for the first one, for CS3 2 minus, we're looking for an electron pair number of 3. That's these big numbers over here, 2 through 6. So we know for the first one, I guess we'll just focus on the first one for now. We know that the first one is a 3. And there's two distinct geometries. We always go with now how many lone pairs there are. In CS3, 2 minus, we said that that center atom had zero lone pairs. So we always just find where the two boxes meet. And in this case, we know that we are trigonal planar. So this molecule would have trigonal planar uh, molecular geometry. So if you want to, you know, arrive, explain how you arrived at your predictions, it's basically just talking about how many atoms and how many lone pairs around the center. And then the same thing for this one, we have a total number of two. So maybe I'll put this in a different color. Two, but for a tour, you only got one answer. This is linear. Linear always happens when you have, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> there we go. Linear always happens when you have two atoms and zero lone pairs.
if you do want to talk about the um, bond angles, I mean, this looks like a linear straight line. The bond angles between the two bonds is 180, as opposed to, so we'll say 180, as opposed to this one, where it looks like it's like cut like a peace sign, right? It's three equal parts of a circle, 360 degrees for a circle divided by three is 120. And that's why the bond angles for a trigonal planar are 120. So that means that all the bonds are 120 degrees. And that's it. There you go. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'm rooting for you guys. Good luck on your testing quizzes. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button and tell your friends about this channel. Just gets the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for all your support. Thanks for being part of the community. You guys rock. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.